All right then guys, welcome to the video. Welcome back to the channel. And yeah, this is the final drive. The final drive of the Civic. It's been a good run. I've had a lot of good fun with it, but the time has come for more power, baby. Yeah, this is not the last drive of the car forever. This video is more about actually my experiences with the car in its current state before the cams and the exhaust go on and all of those changes. So before we actually go out and drive and I run through all the things I found with this car, I thought I'd actually explain what's going on and why the exhaust is gonna be changing everything. So if you didn't catch my original mapping video at Dino Days, basically what happened was in the engine bay, I have all of this stuff to bring more air in and the issue is that the spoon exhaust system is just not flowing enough air out to be able to compensate for well mainly this inlet manifold so if you watch dino day's video on my car not my video on my car then in that video they explain it more but basically this inlet with this manifold and exhaust system mainly the exhaust system that is the thing that's the problem because a standard inlet manifold according to the dino days would have made more power on this setup than having this inlet because the exhaust can't flow the amount of air that this inlet allows in with me getting the cams that doesn't change that situation so i had to get a different exhaust system too so from this view nothing is going to change visually but obviously the skunk 2 cams are going to be going in the engine that's going to be amazing it's going to be great but the reason that i'm not just changing the exhaust because if i'd had to have just changed the exhaust i would have had to have got a different map anyway because it would have flowed more air so i was like well now is the time if i'm ever going to do it i might as well just get the cams at this point and only get one more remap if you get what i mean so that's sort of the reason behind why i've ended up going down this route so anyway that's the engine stuff now let's head to the back so this spoon exhaust it does sound incredible at full acceleration <laughs> However, on cold starts and sort of just general driving around when this thing is not super warmed up, and actually to be fair, even when it is warm, at low speeds, this thing just does not sound good. And it's to the point now where I'm just so over how loud it is. It's just too much. Basically, ever since I changed the exhaust on the S2000, that sort of made me realize just how loud this thing is, but also just how it is pretty unrefined is probably the way I'd explain it. It is incredibly loud, really raspy, and just doesn't have a nice tone, especially cold. And also, obviously, the exhaust is the thing holding back the power of this car. So I'm basically gonna try and kill two birds with one stone with this. So I'm gonna be getting a bigger exhaust, but also a quieter exhaust. But what I'll do is I will show you. So let me jump in, start it on drive off, and we'll get the camera to follow so you get the idea of what I'm talking about. So guys, as you can tell, that thing is just too much. It is way too much for just daily driving and to sort of the low speeds and all that kind of stuff now. So the fact that it's restricting the power and because of how loud it is in situations like that, that's basically why it's getting changed. But to elaborate on that some more, let's jump back in the car with me so I can explain a few other things. And I just thought I would also run through basically what this thing's been like with the current setup so I can compare this to the future setup and also just sort of to give a nice little bookend to the end of the EP3 in its current state as it is right now. If you haven't seen any of the other videos, rough overview, this thing currently makes 221 horsepower and I guess I was a bit disappointed in that because I was expecting more power with based on the engine mods that I've got in here and obviously with the exhaust system holding it back, that is where the power was lost. So I always basically knew from once I'd got that map before that I was going to get it mapped again because I wanted more power and let's be honest, 221 isn't a, an amazing figure to talk about. Not that that totally matters actually, because at the time this car was almost undrivable because of putting the Skunk 2 inlet on and because of having that exhaust on the car as well. Unmapped, it just wasn't running great and I was just babying the car around. The map alone, gaining that 50 horsepower in the mid-range as well, 
massive difference, huge, huge change to how this thing drives. Even at 220, it's still a much better car, even though it sounds like it's only 20 horsepower more than the standard car. It's a far more drivable car, even in its current state. So what I'm hoping is gonna happen with the new setup, I'm hoping I'm gonna get high 250s, it'd be nice to see 260 or something like that with the Skunk 2 dropping cams. But at the moment, I don't really know because I don't know if just changing the exhaust is going to make all the difference. Maybe I've got a her engine or something. I, I just don't know, basically. So with the new map, the VTEC crossover has been completely smoothed out. So this thing, you now don't get the crazy changeover, which I guess is a bit of a shame because this Tegra induction kit with the crossover of an unmapped car sounded so good. But the performance gain for not having that basically drop in power crossing over to new cam, which Honda mapped into their original map, means that I have gained 50 horsepower in that mid-range now, which is a huge jump makes this thing far more usable when like accelerating out of a corner or something like that. It's also to the point where I do think this thing is at the, even at 220 low down is definitely faster than the S2000. I just feel like the S2000 will catch up once you get higher in the speeds and once that thing's fully in VTEC because the gearing is so much longer in that he stays in the power for longer. This thing, even at 221, has been a lot of fun and has been far more usable for me than it not being mapped, which I guess is also why I'm so excited to see what happens and how much power this thing makes afterwards because it's already a fun car and already can keep up with quite a few things on, on the road. If I do see that extra 40-ish horsepower, that's just going to be nuts. VTEC in this has been lowered to 4,500 RPM, which is also where the launch control is mapped in. I say launch control, it's basically it just not crossing over onto the VTEC cam and there is no sort of traction control that goes along with that, as I found out in the North 60 videos. So with the Skunk 2 drop-ins, I'm pretty sure the VTEC's gonna go back up to between five and a half and six and a half thousand, I think. So that's gonna be an interesting thing to get used to as well, especially because that almost puts it back to where it was as standard. I'll also be curious to see whether the new map is gonna be with the car revving out to the same 8,600. I assume it will be, to be honest. I can't see that being the thing that changes. I know it seems weird because it sort of seems backwards, but I'm kind of looking forward to this being mapped again because it gives me things I can relate to rather than it just being everything in one go, which obviously is the way more cost-effective way of doing it. And I'm hoping that basically through the videos that can inform your decision. So I've gone through this so that you know what you can do. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the difference because realistically, all I am doing is changing an exhaust and putting some cams in. Like that's not that much of a change, but that's only because I've done all of the other stuff already. It is also at the point of diminishing returns for the spend. Beyond this, it kind of, unless I do a K24 Frank engine, which to be honest, I'm probably not gonna do unless I blow this K20 up or whatever. I can't see me spending any more money on the engine side of things to get more power because it just becomes so unrealistic. I'm not gonna be boosting this, it is gonna be staying at A. And I think beyond what I will have done, I think it's just too expensive to keep going. But in terms of the day-to-day -day livability of the map itself, it's been great. It's been way easier to drive. That extra mid-range power helps in day-to-day -day situations, for example. The one thing that I've obviously already alluded to is this exhaust system. Now, the spoon system, it holds a special place in my heart. I mean, this is a sixth gear pull. There's VTEC. It just sounds incredible, but for me, it's just too much for the daily. When it's cold, you just start it up, it's early in the morning, or you're just pulling away like low speeds around town or whatever. It just sounds awful, it's just really raspy. And the drone isn't too bad at motorway speeds. I'm used to that really. We're doing 30 miles an hour here in fourth gear. It's pretty droney in here. Let's do a cheeky second gear pull here. This is great though. So those overrun pops, popping flames above 6,000 RPM, which is a feature I asked for because I didn't want them any lower than that because I'm not trying to be an ASBO everywhere I go. I don't want to sound like a Fiesta with a pop and bang map. It's whatever you're into, I suppose. But for me, yeah, having it over 6,000 is cool because if you're over 6,000, it means you're obviously giving it a little cheeky send. So I will be doing a full exhaust system change. I'm taking the spoon manifold off. I'm taking the spoon N1 cap back completely off and changing to a different exhaust system because I just need that flow. I mean. <laughs> oh, it is 
is so good. I just don't enjoy starting it and being like, oh, I'm annoying the neighbors and all that kind of stuff. That is clearly me getting old. The time has come. I think with the cams as well, I think it's gonna be a perfect tie up to how I've always wanted it, if that makes sense. Obviously I get to bring you guys along so you'll get to see the difference so you can make your own informed decisions. And I'm hopefully gonna save you money by me spending money on two maps. Exciting times. I've, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. It's been on the cards pretty much ever since I did get the last map. It's time for a bit more power. That's what we're always all chasing, isn't it? If everything goes to plan, this car will be exactly how I want it power-wise. So in summary then, we've got 221 horsepower. We've got VTEC crossover at four and a half thousand RPM. Redline moved up to 8,600 RPM. 50 horsepower gain in the mid range. It's gonna be interesting having a, this car with a different exhaust tone because I've had this spoon exhaust on the car for a long time. Four years now, I think. Oh yeah, also we've got flames over on the D-cell over 6,000 RPM and on high rev gear changes as well. So I hope this video has basically answered all your questions and given you some insights into what is happening with the Civic and why I'm making the changes basically. I am very excited. I've obviously had those parts. Well, I've had from buying the exhaust to the install will have been six months. I've had the cams, I ordered them four months ago. Yes, yeah, so I've had all these parts, like this has been coming, in my head, has been coming for a while because I've actually physically had the parts or have had, I've ordered the parts ages ago. Hopefully you found this one useful for answering any questions, but if there are any other questions you have, leave them down below. The next few videos are going to be exciting on this channel because they are going to be, well, we're getting the parts installed, that's the next video. We're then getting it mapped and then there'll be the first drives. There's a lot of really exciting EP3 content coming so if you're not subscribed already please do consider subscribing because i know that there's about 80 percent of you that watch the videos aren't subscribed to the channel just a like a comment and a subscribe helps the channel out so much it allows me to bring you cooler content like the tegawa tour video so i really appreciate it if you're not subscribed so please subscribe to the channel and hopefully you'll be back for the next few videos because it's exciting times with this car and we've also got s2000 stuff in the pipeline i have other stuff for this for this car in the pipeline and i'll catch you guys oh we've got a Golf GTI here. <laughs> Sorry, Golf GTI in front. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.